Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you this morning, visiting with Ryan Wolf, who has a very interesting job. He is the Disability Ministry Pastor at First Christian Church in Canton. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Ryan, thanks for being here, and i um, very interested in how this position began. Are, we, are you the first person to hold it? Yes, I am the first person to hold this position at First Christian, and I'm one of the very few that hold this position that I'm aware of anywhere. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet, why? This seems like something that you think, oh, we should have this everywhere. Why do you right. think that it just doesn't occur yet? Uh, I, I think it's it's an up-and-coming ministry. I think it's it's going to hit the forefront of ministry here soon. Um, I think back to like uh, the 1950s and 60s when youth ministry didn't really exist, and mm-hmm. then it, it kind of exploded on the scene. And I really feel like uh, disability ministry is, is on the forefront, and it's coming, and uh, will be. Uh, recognized and uh, and positions like this will be filled in many churches uh, in years to come. How long have you held the position? I've been in this position for a little over five years now. Wow. Um, yeah, I've been at First Christian uh, for over 14 years. Uh, before I became the disability ministry pastor, I was the family pastor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a part of my duties as family pastor, I oversaw both children's ministry, uh, youth ministry, and our special needs ministry. Necessity is the mother of inven- invention. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that how this came about? You were all talking, thinking we really need to focus on our mem- our congressional, our congregation yeah. members who have a disability. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the really great things about First Christian, one of the things that I love about First Christian is that uh, they've always had a class for adults with developmental disabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Hidden Treasures, and that class has been around for 35 years. Wow. Um, so there's always existed uh, that at First Christian. Um, when I uh, was the family pastor and I oversaw special needs ministry, we started a class for children uh, with different special needs. And uh, in just the way that God continued to bless those ministries, uh, it became one of those things where we couldn't ignore it. Mm-hmm. We, we thought, well, if God's hand and blessing is on these ministries, uh, we better pay special attention to it and uh, and see what God might want us to do and, and do more in those different areas. So is there a time where folks with a special need are separated out uh, or do everyone worships together or both? Uh, we do a little bit of both, First Christian. Um, for, for like I mentioned, uh, our Hidden Treasures class meets at 9.30 in Heritage Hall, and uh, we have about 60 adults uh, in that class. We do have a, a, you know, a good mixture of, of helpers and, and typical folks in there as well. Um, so, so, yeah, it is a time where they can have their own Sunday school class, um, but during the 11 o'clock hour, we integrate into uh, the congregation, so it's definitely inclusion as well. Um, In our children's ministry, we do both uh, inclusion. Uh, We also have a buddy system. So uh, if a family would want to send uh, their child that has special needs into the typical children's ministry classrooms, uh, we'll send a buddy with them for the day. Nice. um, Or we'll just include them into typical programming. But uh, we leave it up to the parents. Uh, we don't. We try not to dictate to families what they should or shouldn't do with their children. We just want to provide the options for families. Yes. Because so many times, uh, families that have uh, children with special needs are dictated to. You know, this is what you should do, mm-hmm. or this is what you need to do. And we don't want church to be that type of environment. We want to give them the choice that, you know, if they want to have a, a separate experience for them, we can provide that. But if they want them to be included, uh, we'll do everything we can to make sure that that happens. As I'm well. thinking of worship services where I know there was a young man. He was an adult. Um, but had had uh, developmental, you know, lived with developmental disabilities mm-hmm. throughout his entire life and loved to worship. And I think, Absolutely. you know, that was not distracting at all. That was something I think everyone enjoyed. Just thought, oh my goodness, just that's from the heart. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, one of the really neat things is because we do inclusion in, in so many different areas at our church is you'll see different people um, that you may suspect has a disability or, mm-hmm. or not, uh, and, and they worship sometimes in a much freer way yes. uh, than, than I probably feel you know, comfortable worshiping. And uh, we have we have a young, young man that uh, um, he's probably a teenager that he'll dance. Um, oh, in the back of the church, yeah. uh, and he does his thing, uh, which is I think is awesome that he, he feels free uh, to worship in such a way. Um, we can learn from them, can't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's very cool. At this point, what kinds of uh, disabilities are you making options available for? Uh, we, try to, we try to include anyone um, that wants to. Um, so uh, we also, uh, during the week, uh, Monday through Friday, we have a day program. 
uh, called First Christian Day Services, uh, where we have uh, adults, uh, this is post high school, uh, that can choose us as an independent provider. We're a faith-based uh, day program mm -hmm. uh, where, where individuals can choose uh, our day habilitation. So it's a rec and leisure program. We also have an employment program at First Christian for adults with disabilities. Um, so we have hired uh, over 14 adults. Uh, they're part-time employees of First Christian Church, and uh, this is uh, this is a Medicaid-run uh, program, which is which is awesome that we can work with the state of Ohio and offer a faith-based alternative uh, to maybe going to the workshops or other day programs. Very so, cool. so yeah, with within our day program, we do Monday through Friday, uh, and our weekend ministries. Um, you name the disability, and we probably uh, have the blessing of of working with these individuals. Well, this is what I'm starting to think. Do do you need? Does this mean that you have? Um, hymnals and Bibles in Braille. Does this mean that you have uh, ASL provided at every worship service and every Sunday school class and so forth? Uh, tell me what this really looks like. Uh, well, we definitely have uh, people that have some, some visual impairments. So we'll use, uh, in, in Hidden Treasures, for example, we'll use a projector, and we will project on the screen the scriptures and the different things very large. Uh -huh. I mean, probably uh, on a projector screen that's probably um, 20 feet by 20 feet. I don't know if it's maybe that big, but it's, it's very big so people can mm -hmm. see. Uh, we always use a microphone in the classroom because there we have some people that are, are hearing impaired. Um, and then uh, we, we just recently had a, had a new friend join our class that needs sign interpretation. So uh, we're working with uh, Triad Deaf Services. We're working with uh, Stark State to get some students to come and provide um, some different sign interpretation. Oh, nice. um, because uh, we want everyone to have that good experience. We want them to feel connected, and uh, we want them to experience the love of Jesus, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't want different obstacles to stand in our way. So, so we'll do everything we can um, to make sure that, uh, that people can have a great experience. We're speaking with Ryan Wolf. He's the disability minister pastor uh, at First Christian Church in Canton. Mm -hmm. um, how do people find out about you when a family is searching for a new church and they they meet with you specifically and say you know we're going to have this special need yeah i mean there are times when a, a family will call me ahead of time or, or shoot me an email look us up on on the website uh, fccanton.com uh, and they can find different things about our disability ministry online and uh, i We'll meet with families if they request that um, before coming to church, um, especially if especially if they have a kid coming in our Shine Ministry. We always like to make sure we do uh, in a, a pre-registration so we can have a good conversation to know uh, exactly how we can best um, meet the needs of, of the individual coming. Uh, a lot of times people just come and check us out for a couple weeks and just kind of lay low, and that's okay too. And then you know they get the courage to say, hey, we think we might want to uh, be involved in this ministry, and, and then you know, we meet people where they're at. So. And they notice that this is available. And it's got to yeah. make that makes an impression in itself. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people have have come to First Christian because of what we make available because it is unique. Uh, not many churches are doing a disability ministry or or offer the different things that we do. So um, we've noticed a lot of people have been attracted and have invited friends um, because of the different things that we provide. It calls the question, what was done before? Because certainly we've always had people that are born with a disability of some mm -hmm. kind. What was done before? Uh, not much. Not much. Um, uh, people in the disability community, I find, um, have been excluded a lot or they're just, they disappear. They, you know, it's almost a hidden community uh, where people with disabilities live in every community, um, but kind of fade uh, to the background because there aren't a lot of things available for them or they don't feel included or they've had a bad experience at church. And uh, we try to do everything we can to make sure that that isn't the case at First Christian. When you think about it, we all have disabilities. Some are just more can be observed more easily than others, but you know, we're yeah. really home, home, all Ab in the same boat, aren't we? Absolutely. When, when you think of the disability community, it is the largest minority group mm. in the world, people with disabilities. And it's also the only minority group that people can join at any time. That's right. If you think about that. That's right. Um, because you can have an accident and you can get a disability. Mm -hmm. Or as you age, you'll probably have a disability if you don't already. So uh, it's something that 
a lot of people and a lot of churches shy away from but shouldn't um, because it's something that any of us can and probably will experience in a lifetime. But how wonderful that you're not allowing these people to fall through the cracks, that you are specifically seeking them out to minister to them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things that uh, uh, I'm, I'm super excited about coming up in March, uh, March is Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. And one of the things that First Christian we do every March is, is we highlight our disability ministry. Mm. So on March 20th, which is Palm Sunday, uh, we are going to have our second uh, annual Disability Ministry Sunday. Um, so on March um, 20th, our disability ministry uh, will take over our weekend services at First Christian, um, and that's one of the ways that we try to highlight what we do and what we offer for families um, by allowing some of our friends with disabilities to take over different elements of the service. That which is, is wonderful. Which is really cool. So it's, oh it's, it's one thing for a church to say, yeah, we accept everybody. Right. But it's a whole other thing for a church to say, not only do we accept everyone, uh, but we're going to turn over uh, our weekend services to people with disabilities. So uh, we'll have people um, from our different ministries on stage doing uh, doing dance, uh, doing uh, sign language, um, having the communion and um, um, our offering meditations. They'll be doing that. Oh, wow. uh, we're doing different uh, videos that we'll be uh, showing on that mm-hmm. Sunday. Um, so it's, it's going to be a really, really cool uh, service. Last year was the first time that we did that, and it was just such a huge blessing that uh, uh, Pastor Ryan said that, you know, we want to make sure that we do this every year. It obviously went well, or you wouldn't mm-hmm. be doing a second time. Were you a little nervous the first time? Absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're never sure on how people are going to respond. Mm-hmm. Um, be, but, but having such a freeing uh, worship experience yes. for everyone. Uh, was was just a really neat thing, and and then just to highlight what we do because uh, being a large church, a lot of people probably don't know what all we offer, um, but just to be able to kind of put it out there on on a Sunday and just say, hey, this is what God's up to in our ministry. Where the fellow who loves to dance in the back is now put on stage to lead. Absolutely, absolutely, cool. yeah. We have uh, we'll have our friends from First Christian Day Services on the stage. We'll have our friends from uh, Hidden Treasures and Shine Ministry like on the floor in front of the stage, uh, dancing. Uh, last year we did um, we did um, beach balls. Uh, this year we're going to do glow sticks um, for everybody in the congregation. Neat. So so yeah, it's it's definitely a fun uh, fun Sunday. You mentioned uh, Shine Ministry a couple of times. You recently had a prom. Tell us about that. Yeah, we had uh, we hosted a Night to Shine prom, and uh, Night to Shine proms uh, are all sponsored by the Tim Tebow Foundation. Um, so we were one of 200 prom sites across the world. Uh, there were a Night to Shine proms in 48 uh, different states and I think six or eight different countries, including Haiti, uh, which was really cool to be a part of that. So, uh, yeah, we had 200 guests. Uh, those guests um, had about 100 and I want to say 120 or 125 family members that attended with them. And we had over 300 volunteers wow. uh, to make that night happen. So, so tell us about that night. Um, what did that look like? That had to be very special. It, it was amazing. And we've done seven different uh, proms before this prom. So this wasn't like the first prom that we had done at our church. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it definitely definitely had a different feel to it because it we, we did a more formal approach to it. So uh, we encouraged um, the ladies uh, to dress up in formal dresses. We encouraged all the guys to wear suits or rent tuxes. And uh, we had a great experience with that. We had a enough prom dress donations um, from places like city cleaners and uh, individuals in our congregation that uh, all the ladies that wanted to get a formal dress that maybe couldn't afford one, we were able to give one away for free. Um, we worked with the men's warehouse here on the Strip, uh, and they gave 50% discounts, which was which was awesome to anybody that wanted to rent a tux. Uh, so, so that was great. So it definitely had a formal feel. Um, and, and when you think of going to the prom, you always think that there's there's going to be one king, there's going to be one queen of the prom. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all of our guests um, were kings and queens for the evening. Um, so all the guys got a crown to wear, and all the ladies got a tiara uh, to wear as they came in. They all got flowers. Um, they, we had a red carpet that was probably over 100 feet long that they walked down. We had a backdrop, and we had a bunch of paparazzi taking pictures of them and cheering for them as they came oh, in. So, um, so yeah, it was awesome. We had shoe shiners and hair and oh. makeup salons as a part of the evening, so they get their hair done. We had a formal di- sit-down dinner 
uh, for them. And then obviously we had, we had a DJ and, and karaoke going on. So, oh. so yeah, it was just, it was a fabulous, fabulous night. Uh, a lot of the pictures uh, were on the Canton reps website. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, we'll be posting some on, on our website as well. So wonderful. All right. Well, we've got to take a break. We're with uh, Ryan Wolf. He's the disability ministry pastor at uh, first Christian. And we'll be back after these words from our sponsors. You're listening to our community.